morning, everyone. Good, uh, good morning, everyone. It's, uh, it's great to, for me to be back in uh, Detroit as uh, someone who grew up in Buffalo and uh, spent a lot of hours uh, de uh, restoring old Detroit muscle uh, back in the, uh, the 70s. It's always, uh, it's always great to come back here and see what's going on um, in this great industry. And it's especially uh, exciting to be here today as uh, technology reinvents the transportation industry with huge implications for Detroit, the economy, and for society as a whole. You know, in the communications business, we know something about uh, reinvention. Now, I would say, in fact, that we've been doing it for decades. If this were 1995 instead of 2014, I'd be telling you all that very soon your computer would speak, your television would listen, and your telephone would show you pictures and videos. I'd be predicting that mobile phones the size of shoeboxes would one day be so small and affordable that everyone would have one. I'd be talking about an era in which entertainment, news, publishing, and music would all converge in a giant stream of ones and zeros to be transported over something we would call the information superhighway. Well, it's now 2014, and all of this, and I'd say a lot more, has come true. The lines between communications, computing, and content have all come tumbling down, and all of these industries have been reinvented around the amazing possibilities of broadband technology. Now we're in the middle of a new kind of convergence, this time between the digital world and the physical environment. You can see the disruptive effects of this everywhere you look. All of a sudden, Google is a car company. Cars are computers on wheels. I learned this morning that there are more computer code in a car than there is an airplane. Wearable devices can count your steps, your calories, the number of hours you sleep, and even the quality of that sleep. Your cell phone can turn on your lights, start your air conditioner, control your, cons your uh, security systems, and much to their chagrin, watch your kids from miles and miles away. And that information superhighway we've been talking about all these years isn't just a metaphor. As roads, bridges, railroads, supply chain, they all begin to integrate with that communications network. Today, the car is the biggest, and I'd say coolest, mobile device that any of us own. Like that smartphone, the smart car is rapidly becoming the platform for innovation and the focus of attention for the best technology minds in the industry. But I'd say the connected car is just the beginning. Before long, the car will be just one more node in a seamless digital ecosystem that will unite the home, the office, the highway system, and the energy grid. By 2017, there will be three times more network devices than there are people on the planet, giving us new ways to interact with and control our environment. The Internet of Things is reinventing industries, creating new business models and remaking our infrastructure. The potential for improving customers' lives is tremendous. And yet, Americans still waste $120 billion sitting in traffic. 30% of the congestion is in cities is caused by people looking for parking places. And we still get in our cars and burn a gallon of fossil fuel when we want to test the emissions looking for a service center. 33,000 Americans still lose their lives in traffic accidents every, day, every year. We still have 200 million cars in the U.S. alone with no connectivity whatsoever. 
By 2040, more than two-thirds of the world's population will live in urban areas, which will further tax that aging infrastructure. Despite all that, we have yet to make a real commitment to rebuilding this country's 20th century transportation system for these 21st century challenges. But the good news is the building blocks for a greener, smarter, and more efficient society are in place. So I'd say it's now time to take our cars and shift them into the higher gear. Today I'd like to talk about what Verizon is doing to leverage the next wave of technology convergence and accelerate the benefits that will come from an intelligent transportation model for the 21st century. It all starts with the foundation of an intelligent transportation ecosystem, the communications network itself. Verizon and the rest of our industry has invested more than a trillion dollars over the last 20 years to deploy a pervasive, reliable, and secure network, which is required to support this massively connected environment. We've connected homes and businesses with fiber optics. We've built the global internet backbone to transport massive amounts of digital cargo. And we've upgraded our wireless networks with 4G LTE technology to deliver the truly mobile broadband experiences that have launched the machine to machine or internet of things revolution. We've also invested in platforms and enabling technologies that are vital to the functioning of those intelligent systems. We operate extensive cloud networks that can store, share, and safeguard digital information. We're a leader in cybersecurity to keep data private and safe from security breaches. We have a growing expertise in big data analytics, led by our former head scientist for NASA to turn this data collected by the Internet of Things into intelligence that leads to smarter and more efficient systems. <clears throat> and of course, we have Verizon Telematics, formerly Hughes Telematics, which is focused on delivering connectivity to the transportation marketplace. Together, these intelligent technologies have created a platform for spreading innovation at speeds we could only imagine a few years ago, in particular, allowing us to network anything that has an electronic chip in it. The number of these connected devices is growing at a compound rate of 27% a year. GE estimates that connected technologies have the potential to reduce the global transportation industry's demand for fuel by 14%. In fact, <clears throat> if the internet technologies reduce demand for fuel by just 1%, it would save the railroads 27 billion, the airlines 30 billion, and the power industry 66 billion over the next 15 years. As the network company Ericsson says, the next big thing is actually a trillion small things armies of tiny machines working in the background to transform how we bank, how we shop, how we run our factories, how we manage our cities. They're also transforming how we drive. Experts say the number of cars connected to the internet will grow from 23 million today to 152 million worldwide. Increasingly, they're an extension of our digital lives, seamlessly integrating your wearables and your home automation system and your other mobile devices. This pervasive connectivity also makes possible the autonomous car, which at least six major manufacturers say they will introduce in some form by 2020. Autonomous cars will constantly interact with other vehicles and the transportation infrastructure itself, creating a dynamic system that can regulate traffic, save fuel, and create safer highways. 
calling them the next giant step in automotive safety, the transportation department says autonomous vehicles could prevent or mitigate 80% of all unimpaired vehicle crashes. Researchers say that <clears throat> automating even 10% of cars and trucks on the road would eliminate 1,000 traffic deaths every year. So all in all, the safety and productivity benefits of autonomous vehicles are estimated at $1.3 trillion. It's likely that in the not too distant future, every new car will be equipped with this vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle technology. But we have to do more than provide the technology. We have to create the solutions that make people's lives better and address the big challenges that we face as a society. At Verizon, we be believe that big, those big challenges deserve powerful answers. And we're delivering solutions that are helping to make transportation systems faster, smarter, and greener. Let me give you a couple of examples. State Farm Insurance is using our telematics solution to reward good driving habits with better insurance rates. They connect a plug-in device in your car to the Verizon cloud to provide feedback on how fast you accelerate, how safely you turn, how hard you brake, the safer you drive, the lower your rates. Car companies like Mercedes-Benz and VW are also using Verizon Telematics to make driving safer and highways less congested by detecting accidents, alerting first responders, picking the best route, and updating those huge lines of software. Just Sunday here at ITS, GM's Mary Barra announced that Cadillac would begin offering advanced intelligent and connected vehicle technologies by 2017. And going forward, we'll be able to reduce our carbon emissions by testing your car's performance without a trip to the service station. Telematics can also reduce the cost and the carbon footprint of large commercial and government vehicles. At Verizon, we offer a solution called Network Fleet which allows fleet operators to track fuel consumption, map, map out efficient routes, <clears throat> and monitor the condition of their vehicles. We're actually using <clears throat> excuse me, network fleet in 29,000 of our own vehicles to better manage these assets worth hundreds of millions of dollars. We think we can save between two and five million dollars in fuel costs just by reducing the idling time on our vehicles. On Monday, we announced that the California Department of Transportation will be using network fleet in nearly 7,500 vehicles throughout that state. <clears throat> in Virginia, 3,000 contract vehicles for the Department of Transportation use network fleet to mobilize snow removal during weather emergencies, better clearing roads for drivers. And finally, here at the convention, ITSA is using our technology to let you know where all those, those important shuttle buses are at any given time. You can take a look at these and other telematic solutions in our booth uh, right here in the Kobo Center. As we've seen with apps like Uber and Lyft, car sharing is becoming a big part of the solution to urban mobility, especially with that all-important millennial generation. Yesterday, we announced Verizon's entry into the sharing economy with a new service called Verizon AutoShare, which will be marketed to rental agencies, car dealers, and municipalities by the end of the year. I think it's actually on the cover of the show daily today, if you want to take a look at it. With AutoShare, you'll be able to use the app on your smartphone to scan a QR code on your car, validate your identity, pay for your rental, <clears throat> and unlock the car anywhere at any time without stepping foot in a rental agency. We think this has lots of potential 
uses for making urban life much more convenient. <clears throat> Another solution for urban mobility is smart parking systems, which have been shown to reduce the time spent cruising for parking spaces by more than 20%. We work with our extensive partner network to offer smart parking solutions in places like Indianapolis, Washington, D.C., New Brunswick, and Ellicott City, Maryland. These systems use sensors connected to a wireless gateway to help drivers find parking spaces, pay for them with their wireless phones, and reduce the wasteful circling that clogs our city streets and frustrates all of us as drivers. We're also starting to embed connections into the public infrastructure itself, creating smarter, greener public places and architecture. We've partnered with a company that you saw in the video called Big Belly Solar to put solar-powered trash compactors in cities around the country with wireless connections that tell the city when the trash needs to be collected. In Boston, we've teamed up with local entrepreneurs at MIT at their media lab to install solar-powered smart benches, which allow you to charge your wireless device and monitor the environmental connect, uh, conditions. On a bigger scale, we worked with a partnership in Charlotte, North Carolina called Envision Charlotte. That's the uh, former Secretary of Transportation's home uh, market as mayor. We've connected more than 60 buildings in the commercial center to kiosks that display how much energy is being consumed. By sharing that information and enlisting the community in its conservation efforts, Charlotte has reduced its power usage by 8.4% and saved more than $10 million of energy costs in just two years. That puts them well down the path of achieving their goal of being the greenest city in America. These solutions are just a glimpse of what's to come in the convergence of the digital world and the physical world. They give us what I feel is a tantalizing look at how a smart, connected infrastructure will improve the quality of all of our lives. As we build more and more intelligence into our roads, our rails, our freight systems, we'll see an enormous return on our investment in the form of a faster growing economy. In fact, one a uh, study shows that a 10% increase in infrastructure investment could actually boost the entire GDP by 2%. I don't think we can afford to leave an opportunity like that on the table, but to achieve that kind of impact, we need to amp up our efforts dramatically and deliver these powerful solutions on a much wider scale. So what's the path forward? Well, I'd say job one in achieving this potential is bringing connectivity to every car. Of the more than 250 million vehicles on American roads today, only 7% are connected to the communications network. So how do we bring these unconnected vehicles into that intelligent transportation ecosystem? At Verizon, we think the technology exists to leverage our nationwide wireless network to connect the vast majority of these vehicles to a wide range of intelligent services. We're committing to deliver an off-the-shelf solution that will bring the benefits of telematics to everyone in 2015. The next thing we have to do is galvanize innovation to take advantage of this extraordinary new platform. At Verizon, we saw how important this part of the equation was when we launched 4G LTE in 2010. We knew that for LTE to reach its full potential, we'd need to take an active role in developing the ecosystem of devices and applications that would ride on that network. So we created two innovation centers, one in Waltham, Massachusetts, and one in San Francisco, to incubate new technologies and bring them to market. These innovation centers have helped us build a strong 
partner ecosystem and drive a broad portfolio of solutions. Much of that innovation is focused on the intelligent transportation and infrastructure. At our Waltham Center, we created a smart cities test bed to showcase the new connected solutions we have in our pipeline. And let me give you just a couple of examples. Command centers that allow city planners, planners to monitor traffic and manage resources on a daily or an emergency situation. Smart street lights that dim or brighten according to traffic and weather. And environmental solutions that manage energy, water, for maximum efficiency. We also launched a multi-million dollar global competition called Powerful Answers Awards to recognize entrepreneurs creating these connected solutions that address the biggest challenges facing society. We announced our first set of award winners in January at CES with solutions in the area of healthcare, education, and energy. Now we're in year two of that challenge and we've added a new category, transportation. We're just in the middle of the process, but we're really excited about the responses we've gotten so far. We received almost 4,000 entries, which is about double last year, from 78 countries around the world. And we've gotten a lot of terrific ideas to solve those urban problems, logistics, and smart driving applications. Judging's underway, and we will announce this year's winners in January. And we look forward to partnering with those winning entrepreneurs and help smooth the path to market for these new transportation solutions. Looking down the road, we need to move beyond individual projects to think about a holistic way of integrating all of these smart systems, the connected cars, the roads, the buildings, the power grid, and the communications network, into a comprehensive, intelligent ecosystem. Fortunately, the epicenter for this important work will be right here in Michigan. That's because the world's largest testbed for studying smart transportation solutions is being built in Ann Arbor at the University of Michigan's Transportation Research Institute. On Friday, many of you may know, the university announced that Verizon is one of 13 leading technology and automotive country, uh, companies in the leadership circle for the next phase of this groundbreaking research project, the Mobility Transformation Center. The goal of this public-private partnership is to lead a revolution in mobility by addressing the challenges inherent in the shift to connected and automated vehicles. We're very excited to join so many of our partners and customers in this venture, where we'll have the chance to test next generation technologies in a real world environment. Together, we can take innovation in this space to that higher gear and find business models that will speed the delivery of new technologies to market. In a recent town hall, Transportation Secretary Anthony Fox called the challenge of reinventing America's infrastructure a generational issue, last tackled in a major way by President Eisenhower in the 1950s. Now it's our turn to solve this, in, this uh, question for the industry uh, going forward. Our infrastructure transports $468 billion worth of commerce every single day. Yet the United States ranks just 28th in terms of infrastructure investment. So we have some decisions to make about how to invest for our future. And if there's anything we've learned in the communications business, it's that investing in last century's infrastructure may be cheaper in the short run, but it's way more costly in the long run. We can leverage the convergence of the digital and physical worlds to create a smart transportation system for the 21st century, but only if we pay attention to what we've learned in the first wave of the digital re uh, revolution. We need to fight 
for wireless spectrum policies and investment tax laws that, that promote that capital investment in the communications technologies on which the intelligent transportation system will depend. We need to continually reinvent our business models around the internet mantra of innovation and open standards. And we need to work with partners from every single segment of the industry to solve the issues that matter most to consumers like safety, security, and privacy. And I'd say most of all, we need to put the customer in the center of that equation and create the great integrated experience that improve people's lives and make our societies function better. Our reward for doing this right will be new markets, new customers, an explosion of innovation that will fuel our growth and, spre and spread prosperity around the globe. At Verizon, we look forward to being part of this great industry and working with all of you to solve these big challenges for America and the world. Thank you very much. Have a tremendous conference.